go ahead. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Okay. So let me share my screen. Uh, how much time do I have for this topic? I, I think usually it's as long as it takes to resolve it. Oh, okay, great. Um, so today, uh, can you see my screen now? Not yet. Here. Do uh, you just want to present the uh, the document? Um, uh, please hold on. Yeah, actually, we have already also prepared a demo, so it's better to let Kofi share his screen. All right, excellent. But, yeah, but the Kofi coming. Okay, it's coming. Okay, see it now. Yep. Ah, uh, okay. So, so let me get started. And um, so, this is the document Eris already put in the in the folder, and the, um, uh, our objective is to introduce a TLS crate that supports both boring SSL and open SSL in the Rust Z tunnel. And this is the background. To save some time, I will give a brief review. And um, the first is that we have. Uh, PUC for the Rust Z tunnel that switch from boring SSL to open SSL. Uh, this is our in internal PUC. Uh, we have some requirements. So we found that there's no significant gap between the two uh, open SSL and the uh, two libraries. So uh, and and we see there is already a, a issue in the backlog in of, of Rust Z tunnel. So so we. we we're proposing this our 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 PUC to the community for your review, and uh, let's see what we're going on. And uh, this is an open SSL review. Uh, I I I think I have I have put some links in in this document. You can see the data, the uh, algorithm, and the example for open SSL. Uh, the one thing I want to mention is that. Since that uh, OpenSSL 3.1, which is released uh, this month, OpenSSL has started uh, to support the, the AVX, uh, AVX uh, instructions, the, which will help the performance increment. And uh, there's uh, one comment in the issue is that OpenSSL currently doesn't support the quick. And uh, from the roadmap, it is expected to have its first implementation in the upcoming version. Uh, which is uh, supposed to suppose uh, six weeks later, and uh, OpenSSL 3.0 is a FIPS compliant. Uh, we have a version for that, and uh, this diagram is uh, currently the uh, how the Rust Z tunnel used the boring SSL, and uh, you can see the boring SSL libraries are all forked from the open SSL libraries, and uh, we don't see. Uh, there is so many difference between the library families. So, and from our practice, we see um, migrate from boring SSL to open SSL. There's too not so so much eff, so many efforts for it. So, this yeah, is okay. a uh, yeah. before you move forward. I see John Howard has a question here. So, John, please mm -hmm. go ahead. Uh, yeah, before before um, we dive into things, I just wanted to get some clarity. Uh, Easter today, like in sidecar mode, we don't support point or open SSL, do we? Or am I mistaken? Um, yeah, I, I don't think uh, Easter support open SSL right right now, but uh, I know there is a project uh, to uh, to support it uh, named Envoy Open SSL. It's ongoing. Okay, thanks. Also, one thing I just want to clarify, I wasn't sure if this was 100% clear, but an issue being on the backlog doesn't necessarily mean it's something that the community has agreed we want to do. It just means that someone, one person opened an issue. But all right, uh, carry on. Okay, thank you. So any other questions for, for the background and the objective? Okay, if there's no other question, I, I will move on um, to cover the design and the implementation uh, for a quick review. And first uh, is the, the create cat category to demonstrate how the uh, uh, Rust mo modules are located. You can see here is a TLS create in the Rust Z tunnel 
right now we have a TLS dot LS uh, RS and a boring uh, boring module as its sub module and uh, the work we do is create a new module called OpenSS dot RS within the TLS grid and uh, add the necessary OpenSSL specific code code within the OpenSSL dot RS module and to support the TLS functionality. Uh, the third is modify the existing code within the TLS grid uh, to detect the presence of the OpenSSL and uh, use the OpenSSL module instead of the boring SSL module when appropriate. And you can see here is the, the boring SSL module. Uh, it keeps the same to use the boring SSL libraries, uh, the Tokyo boring SSL and uh, hyper boring. And in, in the other file, the OpenSSL module will still utilize, we will utilize the OpenSSL libraries. You can see we use the OpenSSL uh, uh, libraries and the Tokyo OpenSSL. So here in the TLS.RS, uh, here we, we can, the real implementation can be selected by using the config feature, the attribute as shown below if we we use the feature boring we will select the boring module and use the boring ssl uh, crates and if we select open ssl we will uh, build the open ssl module and using the open SSL, all the uh, uh, apis in the open ssl so this is uh, quite simple and uh, the the two here here is the, the feature attribute we can uh, we choose to use in the uh, cargo build command. If we choose OpenSSL, uh, we will build. Uh, we will build two images, one for boring SSL and the other one for the OpenSSL. Uh, so, so we must uh, expose the same create APIs to the user code if we have two two different libraries, and. Uh, uh, and uh, when the internal needs to reference a TLS tag or invoke a TLS method, it can use this, this as usual, uh, use the TLS create and uh, the, something, something was exposed by, by these two independent modules. And th this part, I will introduce the, some example for how to use the TLS create APIs. Uh, at the bottom of this this section, I have list uh, list. I have a list for all the uh, user code in reference to the libraries. First, I want to let you guys to see the examples. Um, the first one is this is an example in the current Zitano code. Uh, it's for the handshake error as a enum reference type defined in the boring SSL, you can see in the there in, in the proxy.rs code, we can see the error is referenced the Tokyo boring handshake error. And uh, with our modification, it will change to um, use the use create create TLS handshake error. And this is the handshake error defined by by the this TLS crate, and uh, it it will be implemented by either boring RS or open open SSL RS. So this is the real implementation. In the boring RS, it will reference to the real boring talk real boring libraries, the Tokyo boring uh, handshake error. This is just a reference. But uh, this is a, a, a example case. So in the open SSL libraries, we cannot find a equally handshake error type de directly defined in the open SSL library families. So we we define our own handshake error for it to to implement the, the to express the same meaning for the handshake errors. So the, we make this for a typical example for the type reference. And here is an invocation example. Uh, basically similar to the reference example, uh, you can see the current code in outbound 
RS Connect TLS is referenced as the Tokyo uh, Tokyo Boring Connect, and in the new code, it will goes to uh, create TLS Connect here. So the Connect will be uh, implemented either by Boring RS or the Open RS dot mod the, the RS. So here, this is the Open SSL implementation. We have implemented a connect in our open SSL module. This is the implementation. We will use the Tokyo Open SSL. So basically, we we our work is to uh, implement uh, independent implementation comparing to the align, which is aligned to the boring SSL module. Here is a change list I mentioned before where the the user code in the outbound or proxy using the uh, SSL libraries. Here is a cha change list, not too much. And uh, this section, I will go to the building and the deployment, uh, which I have already uh, covered in, in previous sections. Uh, we just use these this features to, to control the building if we build want to build our open SSL or run our open SSL, we will add the features open SSL and uh, uh, and, and uh, disable the, the boring SSL FIPS, for, 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 which is a default feature. And uh, uh, I want to mention what, what I want to mention is that open SSL can either be statically linked or that or dynamically linked to the open SSL dot dot so installed on the host container. So this may leave us choice. We can upload our uh, binary, which is a FIP compliant binary into the uh, Zitano code, code base, which like the what kind of we do, uh, do it do in the boring SSL. And we, we, can, we can also choose to uh, we'll upload the, the component the OpenSSL.so into the uh, running environment you know, into our container image base image. So we have choice choices. But uh, either way, we can choose the uh, FIP compiled version. And uh, we have built a PUC for, for this approach, which I want to demonstrate. And uh, we are working on the benchmarks because there there is have something to do with the sets uh, setup and environment. And uh, just, uh, can I just jump yeah. in for a second? Um, so uh, I'm I'm just a little concerned with uh, all the conditional logic that this is going to require. Uh, I think mm -hmm. it's going to add a lot of complexity to the code the way it is, especially that it's kind of merged into the same crate as the boring uh, provider. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think I, I think to do this, I think we would actually want to separate it out and to have two separate crates. Um, and then whatever is using it would just pick it, pick the crate that they want to use. And then, and then we'll have to define some sort of like, you know, trait or something to specify a provider. Uh, because we don't we don't want the rest of the code to even know or care. Um, we we really just want the whoever whoever is bootstrapping the application to to make a, a cognitive choice to say I want to compile in uh, this provider and, and use that explicitly. Uh, I don't know who's next. I think I think Ben had. I, a... Ben was next, but I was responding to you specifically, so I'll I'll cut the line if you don't mind. Um, so I I agree the rest of the code shouldn't care about what the back end is. It should be abstracted. Um, yeah. Linkerd does this with boring SSL and Rust TLS. Um, and they have, I posted a link on the meeting notes, uh, which abstracts this. I think it does add some complexity still. Um, abstraction isn't free, but I think it can be done better than we are, are proposing here. Um, along those lines, I also. Well, never mind. I'll, I'll stop there. <laughs> uh, along those lines, uh, the Quinn library uh, also kind of like 
defines their own uh, kind of like provider API. And, and I've actually just built out support for boring SSL with the Quinn library, uh, which is which is uh, the the main Rust uh, quick implementation. Yeah, yeah, uh, I see. I see a point, and this is what I want to mention. Is that our our actually is our next step in in our plan. We want to abs make abstract create to, for for the SSL functionalities, and the, so the the Rust code will not care with what exactly implementation for it. I, am I understanding your your question right? Uh, yeah, for the most part, I, I I would just say that it wouldn't be a next step. It, it, like this code won't land in this state. Um, that that's I think that's my main point. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Um, okay. For now, we we, uh, we only have have this, this this kind of thing for for quick POC. Um, yeah, yeah. We will do do that for 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 what you mentioned. I think Ben, you were next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was just gonna say that, like, the thing that's like I don't disagree with this at all necessarily, but I think the two things about the doc that are that I don't understand is one is like what's the, the objective? It's not clear if we want to support parallel implementations because there are features that are in one and not the other, or if boring and the Rust bindings we're using are just kind of a pain in the ass to work with. Because I know, like Nate, um, you up you've tried to upstream some stuff. Uh, to the Cloudflare boring bindings and like it, it, they haven't merged anything since last year, right? And it's I, there are things that we need to do that we can't do, and we're blocked by upstream because the Rust bindings for boring that we're using are not very good, and or upstream is not responsive. To me, that's like the bigger problem. I don't really care what we pick for the crypto library as long as it's standardized, relatively has good bindings, and or responsive upstream, and supports FIPS. So like, I, I guess the question is like. Is it a problem with the fact that we pick something, the bindings we have are not very good, and so we want to do another implementation because we're stuck on those bindings, or is it actually we need to support multiple implementations? Or like John was saying, maybe just Rust TLS. Like, do we need the abstraction to support multiple, or do we need to pick a better library with better bindings? Like, that's kind of my question. It's not clear to me which of those two things it is. Yeah, big, big plus one to that. I, I would like this document to kind of clearly express why. Uh, and and uh, follow up to the Rust TLS, thing I, I think rusty ls is the right path and uh, there's there's actually some noise in the rusty ls community of actually kind of like abstracting out the crypto and allowing that to be uh, provided by the platform so that that's actually a, a direction rusty ls is headed anyway mm -hmm. uh, so yeah just just something to be aware of yeah big plus one of that one question i have for the uh, people proposing this do you need the open SSL crypto or do you need the entire open SSL TLS stack because what Nate was proposing um, and I'll also answer one's question which is is rust FIPS compliance there's actually two aspects of these TLS libraries there's uh, there's the crypto layer which is the part that FIPS certifies um, that's like all like the lower level of crypto and I, I could be slightly wrong here so please someone correct me if you if you know um, that's the FIPS part. So there's boring crypto. I assume there's some open SSL crypto. I don't know what they call it. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. Rust TLS, they have this thing called Ring, uh, which is the kind of their implementation. So it's actually that lower level that is the FIPS certified thing. Now, what Rust TLS is looking to do is abstract over the crypto. So they would support boring crypto, for example, which could be the FIPS certified boring crypto, but then still use the Rust TLS, TLS library. That makes sense. So my question for you all is, would that meet your needs, or do you need all of OpenSSL, basically? Yeah, I need. I currently I am using the whole OpenSSL libraries, uh, including the crypto and the, the the upper level for for the. No, I know that's what you're doing, but is that yeah. because it was easiest, or because that's what's required by to meet your use cases? Uh, uh can can you repeat? I mean, do you need to use the entire open SSL or you just happen to pick that? Right? What is your requirement for, for open SSL? Uh, oh, oh, my, my requirement, my requirement uh, is using the open SSL. So um, I, I, I agree with that. Uh, we, we can also pick the, the Rust TLS. And uh, I think we, we were going forward to, to support 
um, multiple libraries like like the Rust TOS. Uh, this is uh, our plan. Yeah. Iris, do you I, have I mean, more you info? Just, like, can you explain why your requirement is to use a yeah, that, I, I think crypto that, part? Yeah, that's the key everybody is asking for the Intel team. So people are not understanding why you guys are proposing this. Uh, it's, especially it brings a lot of complexity to Zitano. So Iris, maybe you have some insights. Yeah, so um, basically from Intel's side, um, the reason we want to propose OpenSSL here is OpenSSL has a good uh, integration with um, hardware accelerators like the uh, what Kofi mentioned, the AVX 512 and our, um, for example, Q Quick Assistant technology, all these hardware drivers has already been open as, as a library. So this is the background motivation for this. Um, the, from just uh, the previous discussion, um, I think I got two points here. One suggestion is um, whether we can utilize the Rust TLS as an uh, abstraction layer and make just make part of the open SSL library to imp to um, I mean to do the crypto functions here. Um, this is the suggestion, right? And uh, maybe we can we can um, from a nascent point uh, is to skip current step and go forward with the next step directly. Uh, is this what I'm currently caught? Uh, so just the one to double confirm if this is correct or not. Yeah, I, I think that is right. Ideal world is Rust TLS supports pluggable backends of which OpenSSL is one, and then we just use Rust TLS. Um, that that would be the ideal world. And, and that'll that'll probably uh, un unfortunately take a bit for that to land. Yeah. So I yeah, suspect yeah. we'll have to have our own provider kind of API for the for the time being. Oh, I mean, you could just wait. That's the, right. This is not a P zero community request necessarily. This is. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, the, the, the acceleration described here, I mean, how far behind is boring us at all with that respect? Yeah, for, for boring as well, it lacks all these um, acceleration capabilities. Um, but OpenSL had this capability and also it had the uh, FIPS compliance uh, version. And from the customer enga engagement from our side, uh, a lot of customers are actually uh, demanding OpenSSL. So, I mean, given that we're not supporting this in Envoy, it's like, I mean, I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. It's, I don't think it's like a big urgency that we can't just go straight to the desired end state necessarily, right? Um, yeah, from community's perspective, it, not, it might not too urgent, but uh, I think it will be a, a great, uh, add-on feature for the end users because they have the flexibility to choose the underlying crypto libraries here. So Iris, I, I, mm -hmm. I think uh, I think before we push on this any further, I, I think it would be great if your team would kind of engage with Rust TLS and see the mm -hmm. state of their uh, their push towards uh, externalizing crypto and, and, and all of that. And, you know, see see if we can kind of figure out what that roadmap is, and and uh, kind of like, you know, kind of set the context with respect to this document, and um, and maybe revisit after we have more information. Does that sound reasonable? So um, yeah, one question here is uh, current is for the Rust Z tunnel, our current version. How about the status of Rust TLS here? It, it has already been supported, or you know, it's just uh, um, experimental status. It's something we would like to do and haven't done yet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Rust TOS, uh, as John just mentioned, Rust TOS, uh, does Rust TOS FIPS compilant now or in the future? Rust TLS is not FIPS compliant and they really Quite honestly, don't seem to have any desire to do it. Uh, but but what they do want to do is is the externalization of crypto, so they could externalize crypto to something that is FIPS compliant. Okay, so so I think my question is um, um, why we we need to um, stick on Rust TLS? If I mean if we can go with the next step directly, I mean. Uh, provide uh, abstraction layer in the Rust Z tunnel and give users the flexibility to choose between OpenSSL and the boring SSL. Is this um, also an um, suitable approach 
for the community? So yeah, so my concern is that Z Tunnel has been one of our explicit design goals is not flexibility. It's actually simplicity, and those are in conflict, right? All, all pretty much all the time. And we have very intentionally chosen simplicity over extensibility and flexibility at every point of the project. So there is a pretty high bar to add more flexibility at the cost of complexity. Uh, we've actually denied other PRs doing the same thing that were kind of introducing complexity to the code base that does not help default users, right? Like this change has absolutely no impact on an open source standard Istio user because we would never ship a build with the OpenSSL feature enabled, right? It adds complexity only for this flexibility, which is something we've kind of pushed back against. Now, if we move that flexibility, externalize it into Rust TLS, then it's not that much overhead for us. And I think the bar, you know, the, the ability to accept is far easier, right? Like in general, it's not really an Istio or Zetunnel specific concern to want to abstract over TLS um, libraries, right? That's a pretty general Rust community concern. Uh, and it's not an easy problem. I think it's something that is best solved by other projects that we then just rely on instead of inheriting all that complexity ourselves. And on the other side, I believe in Envoy as well, they in many ways push the complexity out as well because I think they have a boring SSL shim for open SSL. So as far as I know, and I could be very wrong here, this is like 10 minutes of reading. They don't actually have open SSL libraries directly in Envoy code. The Envoy OpenSSL fork thing has a shim that translates it into the Envoy mode. So the complexity actually doesn't live in Envoy. But here we're talking about putting all the OpenSSL complexity directly into Z-Tunnel. So Eris, as a staff, mm -hmm. it might be worthwhile for you to report back to how Envoy is handled this, because I know the Red Hat team has been pushing OpenSSL support in Envoy uh, for many, many years. Uh, if I recall correctly, it's not part of main Envoy, like John said, but they do have maybe some test around it. Um, so it could be a similar model, potentially we model after with its, you know, I mean, it's something was looking into. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, we're actually working with the Red Hat team for the MOSSL collaboration part. So uh, we definitely can can you know borrow some some idea from that area to the rest of the tunnel part. Yeah, one uh, tiny comment an alternative to 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 what was discussed maybe. Uh, I think it would be very useful if uh, if uh, Zitanal was restructured as a library more, more, meaning that it can be used from other crates and, uh, you know, if someone wants to, to you to reuse a protocol or whatever, and then any vendor can have a different main that may link different OpenSSL or whatever. I don't think, I mean, the, the dependency on, on the encryption part can be, can be kind of contained. Um, and that will also benefit for other use cases. Yeah, I, I agree. So this is the reason why we want to um, um, propose an abstraction layer here. Then um, in one side, we can reduce the complexi um, complexity for the Jazzy tunnel. For the other way, uh, we can allow um, the end users to plug in their own crypto libraries. Yeah, no, but the other way around. I mean, but yes, I agree. abstraction is necessary, so we, we need to be able to plug whatever. But if it, not necessarily as uh, option or or uh, you know uh, build options or complexity in in, in Z tunnel itself, but actually simplifying Z tunnel to be a library and then doing whatever you want in 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 a so have the abstraction. But if you want to plug in OpenSSL, you just have your own main and you do whatever you want in the main. I don't know if it makes sense. Okay, so uh, from the envelope part, uh, I see the envelope open SSL repo here. So um, this, this might be an option for the tunnel as well. We might have a separate repo to do the open SSL work. This might be a direction. Then the other part is the uh, Rust TLS part. We can do some investigation here to see the possibility, but it seems a lot of gaps here because uh, it's not supported yet in, in, in the Rust the tunnel. Um, then the other direction is the abstraction layer in the, the tunnel itself. So um, 
we will um, consume all the comments here and uh, um, maybe revise our proposal and uh, get it reviewed again. Yeah, yeah, just please put your comments in the document so we can, we can see it later. Thank you. Yeah, sounds good. I think areas you summarize very well. So thank you. Thank you, guys. Also, also uh, yeah. just real quick, I, I posted a couple links that are relevant to the Rust TLS discussion with respect to supporting uh, other crypto providers. So uh, if you're interested, uh, take a look. Thank you, yeah. Nathan. Thank you. So are you still interested in to see the demo? Because Kofi also pre prepared a demo. <laughs> Okay, folks, yeah. if you are interested in seeing the demo, please raise the hand. Else, maybe we should just move to the next topic. Okay, if no interest, I think we can go to the other topic. Okay. So I will st stop sharing. Give me a sec. I will share the agenda here. Okay, so next topic is um, Andrea. Yeah, just a quick question. I was just wondering, um, what is our cadence for these alpha builds for Ambient? So I saw that we made like a 1.18 alpha, but we only made one. And then the Istio 1.18 is going to be soon. So then I guess there'll be a beta. But is there a plan to make more alphas or is it just to have the one alpha? Yeah, the yeah is there a reason we need more? I'm just trying to understand. Oh, because I was just wondering because KubeCon's coming up in EU, right? And then if we're not going to make an Istio 1.18 beta before KubeCon, then it might be good to have an alpha with all the features that we have before KubeCon. So we're not just building, showing things off master or whatever. Uh, yeah. Because I know there's several features that went in. Uh, yeah, so good question. The typical cadence, which actually has nothing to do with Ambient, it's just how we're supposed to always do releases, is roughly every two to three weeks we ship an alpha. We historically haven't really done that. Um, once we cut the branch, then it's supposed to transition to being betas. We're supposed to cut the branch on April 11th, so we could ship beta.0 in time for KubeCon and kind of pin that as the KubeCon <laughs> release, so to speak. Um, that would make sense to me. I don't know. Does that make sense yeah. to you? Would that be much difference from the zero? That's what I'm trying to understand. Because last time when no, we... No, I don't think there's much difference. Yeah, the, the problem with the alpha build, Andrew, is last time, I think we spent like three or four builds. John, correct me if I'm wrong. And that whole process took a week. So I don't know if if there's not sufficient um, changes. I don't know if it's worth being another build or if we have resources to test all those builds. Yeah, I was going to say, I think there's two issues, sort of. One is, you know, if we build an alpha, we, we should test it before we publish it, which yeah. is where we ran into issues last time. But I, I think the issue, Andrea, and correct me if I'm wrong, Andrea, I think that the issue she's talking about and, and why we might want to potentially send another one is um, she's doing some experimenting with... Um, Ambient specifically, I think, on IKS, and we're noting differences in behavior. So our, our big question is, is what we're seeing today with the alpha going to be reflected in the beta, or would it be better to try to chase something in the middle? But yes, there is obviously the testing of a, of a build. Yeah, I agree with the way this. I mean, if, if there is any bug that was fixed that one platform will, will needs, then absolutely we need to cut it because we want to have as many users as possible testing it out. So, um, 
And I also did some testing with, with uh, installing with Helm and, and, and the other option. It may be useful also at least to update the documentation and include the Helm update, Helm install options and, and how to, you know, what's the proper way to, to install it with uh, Calico and so forth uh, to make it a bit more uh, more clear in the docs if we don't do release. But, uh, the other point I want to, to make, uh, we discussed before about uh, making new mistakes and not repeating the old ones. Uh, it may be worth, you know, considering having Z tunnel separate from STOD uh, as a release cadence in general, not not for KubeCon, but but moving forward, because they are supposed to be decoupled and they're supposed to be usable independently of each other. That's that's my. We can discuss it next in in few few months again. Yeah, I would prefer to discuss that again. I'm not sure. I'm definitely agree with you not separating for KubeCon. It's, uh, if we can qualify the new alpha build and run through the test, I'm happy already. So Andre, but to your point, I think you definitely should try Alpha Zero or the latest master on IKS. Because if you yeah, have the so issue, we don't want you to wait until Alpha 1 to report the issue. It will be too late for QCon. Yeah, so the master is working. I was just curious, like, so there was an issue in the Alpha Zero. OK, so, then we should cut yeah. a build for you. Yeah. 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 That answers the question. That answers the question. We need to cut another release. Yeah, so. exactly. We didn't know there was a difference, so you clarify it. Can I ask what the CNI provider are you using? I Calico. Calico, okay. Oh, were you using IP table or were you using eBPF? Uh, so I used the IP table, um, Calico, and and with with the ambient eBPF. Okay, that's pretty cool. I actually didn't know it works on with Calico, so that's Sorry. good to know. Yeah, so it was well, but it needs to be the master. There was a fix that went in after the alpha, um, but. And then I had some problem with master like a few days ago, but now master seems okay. So I was like, if we could just get one master or one more cut, then that'd be more official. But I can just keep the tag that I have from the master build that was working too, to just continue my testing. But it would be nice to have the alpha build, an additional alpha build. And I wasn't clear based on the call before, if we were delaying the Istio 1.18 release, would we delay the Istio beta release? But we're saying for sure before QCOM, we would still have that beta release, even if we delay this DO 1.18 release. Yeah. Uh, can you can you clarify again? Because you, you said both IP table and EPF. Uh, did you set the EBDF option in, when you installed on Calico or without IP EBDF? So on Calico, I just had the IP table. But with the ambient, I added, there was a feature that went in for ambient that had ambient using EPPF. And so Okay, so ambient to DBPF and, and okay, mm -hmm. okay. I tested the same thing as well on the so so I want to make sure we all test the same thing and maybe can make it default for Calico. Oh, so you basically you you will have ABPF redirection enabled if I'm hearing yeah. correctly. Okay, so but okay, but I guess you were not testing any Calico network policies because I suspect that probably will not work. Oh uh, no, I haven't tried in that. Calico, changing the Calico network policies, I can try that and see if anything else breaks. But yeah. Yeah, because my understanding is all that ABPF redirect uh, would bypass any network policy enforcement from Calico. I mean, I could be wrong. Yeah. But uh, Lynn, uh, the fact that you use a different port also breaks most of the network policies anyway. So we need to have a discussion about how we deal with network policies. Yeah. or reopen the discussion Definitely. because it discussed a few times but uh, i don't think we should document it very clear that no network policy should be expected to work with uh when when you know this ambient is in use or the tunnels in use even for classic istio yeah that's definitely the state uh at the moment uh no i have another question related to calico sorry uh, if, if it's too much uh would it make sense to have an option that I mean, Calico enable or CNI equal Calico in, in the install? Because there are a couple of options that need to go together. And I was also thinking to add the annotation by default in, in the Z tunnel. Sorry, not following. So you want to put an annotation into the Z tunnel to 
enable Calico? Is no, that... Zitanel setup instructions uh, involve a step where, where you put uh, some annotation with the pod, uh, pod IPs if you want to, to rewrite the source address. And it's pretty mm -hmm. confusing. I mean, it, it took me a while and some help from John to, to re actually even know that that step is required. But we can, you know, put it in the in, in the Helm chart directly, so it's, it doesn't have to be done manually by the user. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I think it, it yeah. we can optimize the experience where people use Calico to have just one option instead of five options and three steps. Yeah, actually, for the Calico Active mode, we have a readme file in the under the eBPF folder. So just follow that step, and you should be 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 make it should work. Yeah, but assuming that some user who you know knows where to look, I mean, I didn't even know about that readme and the content, so that, that was quite a discovery. Uh, I was thinking to put, you know, basically to have an option in the Helm chart and put the, move the readme in the notice in the and simplify it a bit. That's basically. yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, any All right, sounds like we have a plan, Andre. Uh, would this work for you? Yeah. All right, I think we can move to the next topic, Kiss, if you are here. Yeah, uh, so this is a topic still kind of following up uh, on the safe mode plans. Um, for most of the time I've heard, uh, we're talking about ambient, it's kind of been uh, grouped together as a feature, you know, ambient itself is alpha. Um, but I wanted to start getting people's thoughts and getting people thinking about um, how we might start considering features within ambient and breaking that down and having more um, isolated uh, or more separate feature stages per thing in, in ambient. Uh, so for example, um, yeah, I'm blanking on an example right now, but as, as new features in ambient come out, um, you know, ta uh, tags or uh, certain topologies like a like a sandwich of Z tunnel sidecar Z tunnel, um, all these various things. Um, we probably are going to want to have uh, some delineated support within like the ambient category. Um, so my question is, you know, for long term ambient supportability, what do we think that that point is uh, where we're going to stop considering? Uh, ambient as a whole having a certain feature status and start kind of breaking out things in the deployment model uh, to have different support. Anybody have opinions here? I would think that once any portion of it has a different stability, then it makes sense. Um, I mean, we could do it now, but it's kind of like, you say here's these 10 aspects of ambient they're all alpha it's <laughs> different at that much value right uh but once we you know say oh ambient base is alpha or is beta but xyz is alpha i think that's that's fine and i do think it's good to be granular i think that's a mistake we made with the gateway api where we weren't granular enough about what was stable and what was not okay got it um so, sorry go ahead Costin. No, uh, I mean, we discussed this in a few weeks ago. I think we need to just differentiate between the API surface and actual features that happen to work. I mean, topologies, other things are kind of separate from uh, API. So we need to be very strict and very clear about what APIs can be used and what the APIs will do and have make sure we have testing. And especially if we go with a, with a gamma API as the main API surface, there is a compatibility test. Any implementation of Gamma will, will have the same API, will work the same way. You don't care how it works. You just care that HTTP routes work with whatever topologies are available. And that's from user perspective. And from vendor's perspective, you have different choices. You can support you know, multi-cluster, you can support multi-network, you can support whatever, the, but that's kind of an expert and, and um, uh, you know, kind of Google or um, Microsoft or, or Amazon, or, you know, kind of taking care of things for their platform and, stabilizing them, testing them in their own environment. Like what CNI provider is supported, what, uh, we, you know, maybe CNI provider, Calico works in some vendor, doesn't work in another. Okay, yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, well, as far as kind of the plans for, uh, for safe mode, uh, I think that um, Ambient, of course, makes sense as one of those exceptions. 
where even though it is at this point it's truly alpha but it's it's something that's considered to be uh the future um for for istio so we want to encourage users to to use it um but uh we'll make space kind of as we're drafting up the the process here for uh, more granular things under ambient um i guess a, a follow-up question that i just thought about um do we think it makes sense to um ever mark all of ambient as beta or gradually gradually graduate things to beta within the ambient category. Uh, I think Kostin was first and then Justin. Yeah, just quick, just on, 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 the, on the first part uh, that uh, ambient is alpha. Well, safe Istio is also alpha, technically, because it's just brand new, it's a doc right now. So I think it, I, I kind of changed my mind a bit about, uh, so maybe we can have safe mode alpha plus ambient alpha in 118 in some form or another. And as ambient is graduating to beta, we also graduate safe for, for ambient. And I kind of, I change a bit more my mind about Istio safe. I, I see it as a control plane options for ambient and what you would install if you wanted to have ambient and to have, you know, a mix of ambient and sidecars, but with same semantics and same defaults and, and kind of same set of features that are safe. And because again, Android filters, for example, obviously they're not supported in, in ambient since we don't have a Envoy sidecar. We want to remove them in, in in safe mode, so it's it's kind of a very good match between between the safe mode and ambient plus sidecars restricted to to what ambient is uh, compatible with. If I don't know if I confused you or, or uh, that's a, it's an interesting idea. I, I got to think through it more. Uh, one one thing though, you mentioned uh, for, for one eighteen. I don't think between code freeze and everything else, I don't think we're going to get safe mode into one eighteen. Uh, so probably maybe 119 uh, would uh, would make sense for that. We we can get a doc and we can get the set of defaults that we want, and we can have at least of if you want Istio to test a safer mode, use Helm install Istio with those options that we choose to basically. I mean, we may, you may add a small option to disable to change the defaults to 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 have kind of. Uh, so we can do a bit. We can do a bit to get give people a a way to. Right. Okay, yeah, so no enforcement for sure. Enforcement, no, 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 not enforcement but yeah. let's document agreement, uh, some idea about what features will be turned off and on, and tell people, hey, it's a safe mode. If you want to try something safer, use those options, don't use those things, and, and later on we'll, we'll enforce it. But it's trust based. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, Justin, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I've seen anything new here, but it, it I think it's uncovering the way that we talk about ambient is probably not very helpful and it seems like we should be talking about you know ambient is available as a data plane is like experimental or alpha or beta or whatever and then there's the feature set that it supports within that and we probably should be teasing those apart more than we've um, spoken about in the past so um yeah anyway i don't think i'm saying anything new but i, th I think we, yeah but i think we should i think that's the correct correct path forward i think you're you're highlighting here A great custom. All right, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I will. My goal is to uh, get uh, is to present the safe mode doc uh, in the next working group meeting. Uh, had to fight a bunch of fires this past week, but uh, hopefully we can. Um, I'll have some you know, custom in. I will have some proposals and stuff for uh, uh, ambience within that, and talk about the interactions uh, next week. But uh, thank you all. Thanks. All righty. Uh, I see no other topics on the agenda. Does anyone have anything else you'd like to discuss? All right. If yeah. not, then. Uh, yeah. Uh one thing yeah i see some comments added to our proposal yeah please um add more comments here so we can um analyze it because um some of my team members are in different time zones so we need to consume the comments here thank you all right thank you Aris. okay If there's nothing else, then let's uh, call the meeting adjourned. Thank you, folks, and take care. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye.